Tommy heard some pretty Ricky. Mm. Oh, I love pretty Ricky. Um, all right, we'll get it on. What up, world? As you can see, Anthony. Who that out there? <laughs> Make sure y'all go ahead and leave them likes. If you ain't subscribed, I don't know how you got here, but subscribe. Shoot a comment so I know who you is. I appreciate the ghost viewers, but I like the I like the um I like to know who I'm talking to. Finally reached over thousand subscribers on YouTube, so they let me go live. So I'm, I'm trying this live thing. Sipping on my Starbucks. Okay, we got two people in the building. Y'all go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and hit that like button one time if you um you can hear me. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate you. Okay, we got two people in there. Go ahead and leave a comment so I can know who, who's here. So I can so I can appreciate you. Yeah. Jamila Williams. Walter Bryant. What's up? What's up, bruh? Hey, say less. Say less. You already snow. But yeah, man. I appreciate y'all too coming through here. I'm trying to get about three people in here, three or four people before I start talking about what I really want to talk about. I'm also early. The live wasn't supposed to start at 8 o'clock, but I got excited. Oh, we got three people. Hey, third person, go ahead and please hit that like button. Leave a comment so I can give you a shout out. As I can know who my audience is because I want to tailor these lives to my audience. Also, can y'all hear the music playing in the background or, or is, it, is YouTube blocking it out? What's good? Johnny Five of your life. What's good? All right, y'all. So, I got my three. I got my three. That's what I needed. Jaden, what's up? Let me see what's going on. What about now? Can y'all hear me now? Yeah. Um, Jaden, can you hear me now? I see we got seven people in the building. All right, bet. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, so I'm in the car, so this isn't acting stupid, but I appreciate y'all. But yeah, let me go ahead and get right into this thing, man. Um, as far as getting involved and the why behind the dog business, um, let me first start with saying that the first thing that a lot of people think is I'm gonna get two dogs, I'm gonna breed them, I'm gonna sell puppies, and I'm gonna make a lot of money. And and most Oh, what's up? What's up, Carice? In most situations with other breeds, you can do that. But with this being a working dog, that's not the case. 
And so what I really wanted to start sharing on my lives was the hustle side of the dog business. You know what I'm saying? Like my videos, I, I show the training and stuff like that. But the hustle side is like, how do you sustain your program when you don't have a litter of puppies? Or how do you sustain your program when you're not trying to let any of your puppies go, but you want to maintain all the puppies you just had? And so that's where business side comes into it. And if you want to be a member of the Shogun Army or rock with the Shogun Army, you have to become a business minded person. So never take it personal when you're dealing with business. You got to take emotions out of it. Now, what that means is you're going to have products and your product is not going to be for everybody. That's just like you got, uh, what's the difference? Yeah, got like Colgate toothpaste. You got Crest toothpaste. Some people like Crest. What's good? What's good? Crack it. Some people like Crest. Some people like Colgate. You know what I'm saying? Um, some people like Burger King. Some people like McDonald's. So what you got to do is you got to find a product that you yourself will use. Because they say when it comes to investing, when it comes to business, invest in what you, what you like. So when it comes to the dogs or business or any of that stuff, good morning, Hunt Down Kennel, salute. Uh, when it comes to the dogs or, or any of that stuff, man, invest in what you like, you know, um, so going back to the business side with the dog thing, well, I keep telling people, like, I'm trying to be like the Chick-fil-A of, of dog stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like I sell highs, I sell hoodies, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we sell different things out of my, off my website and that is to sustain my business side of what I'm doing. And it's great to do that because what I'm looking for is I'm looking for great customer service. I'm looking for consistency. I'm looking to put out a product that is the same standard across the board. You know what I'm saying? Hey, crack it. These hoodies are actually kind of expensive because I'm going third party. You know what I'm saying? Now, the hoodies go for about 50 bucks. And what I really would like is to find somebody local who produces hoodies. Business move. You know what I'm saying? This hoodie was actually made local. But the guy that was making them, he was a brother. I wanted to aggregate funds and keep them in the community. But he was moving stupid slow. Now, what happens is when I get an order for a hoodie and he can't produce 10 hoodies in a reasonable amount of time for me to get them out to my, my customers. Now, now I'm the face. You know what I'm saying? My face is holding that, that being late. That's bad customer service. You know what I'm saying? Because if he, I don't care how he makes these hoodies, as long as they are gilded and the quality that I want them to be, that's it. You know what I'm saying? And I, I crack it. I really appreciate you asking that question because that, that allows me to address what I'm talking about when it comes to business. So now I had to outsource it to third party to an actual company online. So now I'm taking that money out of the community because the community not taking care of business. That's business. I'm not mad at that brother at all. And I still go to him when I want onesie, twosie hoodies. But when I want them mass produced, I can't go to him and get a lump sum order in a reasonable amount of time. My brother also said he wanted a 2X hoodie. You know what I'm saying? But this guy, I, I could order him this week and they might not be ready to next month. And that's not the way to go. So that's why on my website, when you order them through my website, it does what's called drop shipping. The company that, that sources my hoodies, they make your order to order and they send it directly to your resident. So I never actually have to physically touch my, put my hand on your hoodie. It comes straight from the company to you, but it's, it has my logo. It has my likenesses that are owned by my sole proprietor company. And I'm also going to talk about why I'm going from a sole proprietor. What's up JT. I'm also going to talk about why I'm going from being a sole proprietor business to a LLC this year. These is, it's not, it might not happen in this live, but I'll, I'll drop all the game I got because at the end of the day, the difference between me and my team, the Shogun Army, the difference between us and other teams is this. I don't want to compete against somebody because I'm just better than them. And I'm going to use, um, for historical purposes, I'm going to use dog fighting because everybody wants to talk about dog fighting when it comes to pit bulls. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Now, back in the day, I'm going to say I saw, I saw old heads that was busting new new greenhorns across the head with worse dogs than what the greenhorn had because they didn't know what they was doing what they had and so that's how i feel about business like competitive markets aren't made because 
the other company is trash. I.e., it's two major phones that the people go with right now. That's either Android or iPhone. You got other phones, too, because when I first came out, BlackBerry was a thing. I don't even see nobody using Blackberries no more. But that's competitive markets. You got two competitors that are really good, and you got a choice between them. I talked about Crest and Colgate. You know what I'm saying? I talked about Burger King and McDonald's. And that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking to compete on a level where I'm at. I don't want to compete beneath my level. I want to go up. I want to go up. And if I'm holding information back from the from the community, then I'm not competing against something that's going to make me better. Because iron sharpens iron, and sometimes sparks is going to fly when you do that. Which means that my competitors, they might throw my name out there and they might muscling me because that's business. That's publicity, publicity for them. The difference is when you test this product, my product is consistent. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was probably like, I don't know, probably 13, 14, that movie, uh, American Gangster came out and Frank Lucas was talking to Nikki Barnes in that, in that movie. Mind you, it was it was embellished for historical purposes or whatever to make it give it entertainment value. But what he said was this product is good. You don't need to step on it. It's good the way it is. I sell it the way it is. I got the best product at the cheapest price. And that's what I need everybody to realize. Like the prices of puppies have gone down because we haven't been doing that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got puppies nowadays. Everybody got game bred dogs. Everybody got nice pedigrees. Everybody got purebred stuff. But there's no way to check it legally. I mean, you can say what you want to say, but you can't prove it. I could go right now on online pairs and make all my dogs champions. All my dogs be champions on online pairs right now today. And that's not... That's not going to benefit anybody because that would be a lie. My dogs are not all champions. You know what I'm saying? That's brutal honesty. But what I can say is my dogs will work. They're going to go grab something if you put it in front of them. And they are smart. And I'm able to show that through my Sunday videos. So what I'm trying to do is compartmentalize and, and set this up where we have the breakfast meetings on Wednesday, me and my old head was talking about this the other day. JT, hey, them old heads, man, I'm not going to lie to you. They gave me a lot of my game, bro. Like, a lot of the stuff I'm saying, I'm just regurgitating information that I was given. Hey, so crack it. Like, honestly, the, the, bro, brutal honesty. I don't have enough watch time hours yet to start a super chat. But what I, what you can do is I drop my website typically in my videos. On my website, they have a donate link to my uh to my PayPal. That's one way to do it. But honestly, the best thing that y'all can do is, is to share the videos because every hundred viewers, I do some kind of drawing. Every hundred viewers, I do some kind of drawing where it's going to be like free hide or uh, money because I believe in investing in myself. You know what I'm saying? Like I believe in investing in myself and I, and I really appreciate what y'all are doing for the community because crack it, JT, uh, Walter Bryant, I see y'all in all the chats. I see y'all on all the channels. I see y'all really supporting the movement, and I rock with y'all. Uh, Jaden, I appreciate you coming in here. Carissa, I appreciate you coming in here. Jamila, I love you so much. I appreciate you coming in here. But um, yeah, man, I got off on a tangent right there, man. But uh, yeah. So going back to the business side of it, so we talk about the best product or competitive product, competitive pricing. All right. So now we talk about pricing your stuff. I'm going to give y'all an example of pricing, all right? So I got an inbox one day. Somebody said, uh, you know, like, um, how much for, why are your hides the price they are? By the way, this Starbucks, y'all, this um, is a dragon fruit with uh, peach juice, fire. And then they messed up my order, so they had to give me a, they had to give me a, a second one because they messed up my order. Oh, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really do love to breed, man. But I love the people, too. And that's the issue with, with our community is we love to breed, but we want to love the people. And who keeps the breed going other than the people? And if they're not educated, then they're going to they gonna lose. But, um, oh, yeah, so about the hide. So with the hide, I have three different sources that I have to order the hides from but for the same reason as the hoodies. And what happens is the I got highs that come from Nebraska, that come from Virginia, and West Virginia. 
they're all cut to the same sizes, but each person, if they don't have a cow that they're butchering or if they're not getting their hide, the large sheets of hide, then I'm having to piece together hides. So the headache that people don't see is I'm paying the shipping from three different states and I'm waiting sometimes three to six weeks for my hides to arrive. Now, what I do is I warehouse them. I stockpile them and have them ready to go. So what you're paying for isn't a better quality hide. Like the hide, the hide from my source is the same hide that I'm getting. The difference is I now have consolidated all three sources in one location for your convenience. So when you order them from me, you get it shipped directly to you as opposed to waiting for them to process it and cure it because they make it to order. So what I'm doing is, yes, I'm the middleman. But in, even in the drug game, there's a middleman for a reason, because you can't take the stuff from a certain location and move it to another location without the transport and the middleman. Now, that person, the reason why they're even paid, why they, why they come into the equation is they remove the headache for you. So you're paying for convenience. That's just like if you go to a fancy motel, you typically they park and ain't attached to the motel. This is another thing for you to learn. I learned this down in San Antonio because I did not notice where I'm from because we don't got no motels with no damn, uh, what's that thing called? The people, not the bellhops. Y'all know what I'm talking about though. We don't got no motels like that where I'm from. I'm from Bladenboro, North Carolina. There ain't a motel in my county. It's worth it. And so um, I, can't, I went downtown here and the motel had a detached garage that was two blocks down from the motel. But then you got bags in your car. You know what I'm saying? And depending on like how long you stay, your bags might be big bags. They got SeaWorld here. They got Six Flags here. You know what I'm saying? They got Spurs games going downtown here. And so you drive up to the motel and you pay this little man $15 to park your car and leave your bags right there on the curb, but you, you can just walk them up to your room. That's paying for convenience. That's grown people's stuff. So when you deal with me, I'm shouldering this. I'm shouldering. Hey, I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. When you shoulder, when you shoulder that weight for other people, they don't see that. And when people don't have to go through it, they don't appreciate it. When people don't have to go through what you went through to get what you got, they don't appreciate it the same way. So now business side moving back to the dogs, because it's what it's about, is the dogs. So you go, you buy two puppies to breed them. Now, mind you, you spent your hard earned money. You can do whatever you want to with them dogs. Don't let nobody tell you different. They call your pedal up, man. Fuck them. You spent that money. That's your money. All right? The longer them dogs is healthy and they doing what you want to do, you breed them and sell them to whoever you want to sell them to. That's your prerogative. I don't encourage that. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm telling you is you got to remove emotion from business. You have to remove emotion from business. The business aspect of it is you breed two dogs. They have nine puppies. You sell them puppies for $500 a piece. You just made $4,500. Now, this to me is my defining trade on whether you're a peddler or not. Even if you sell all nine of them puppies, if that money is not reinvested back into your program in some way to improve the quality of your next stop, then you're a peddler. You didn't go get them no new houses. You didn't buy them food, dog food, because $4,500... My dog's got food for the rest of the year. I have all my medication for the rest of the year. I have money put aside for if I actually have to go see a vet. I'm not on Facebook Live. Or I'm not on here with no GoFundMe talking about I need money to take my dog to the vet. No. If it's a business treated as such and you have restocking fees, you ain't got to explain that to nobody. Not one soul can tell you what your business consumes. Nobody. So back to the marketing and pricing your puppies. All right. So you take your puppy and you go, this puppy works real good. He got high drive. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he shows whatever, however you, I don't care how you test your dogs for gameness, but he shows whatever qualities that you did that makes him a bulldog versus just having a hound on the yard. Right. And you go through that, you put yourself in them trenches, you expose yourself to uh, animal control being called on you, 
having to buy new cages, having to get food, having to provide for this dog for up to up to you know some people don't breathe today four years old. You went through all that all that stress and headache, right? And now this person wants to come to you, and they want you to let a puppy go for five hundred dollars because that's all they can afford. Psh, get out of here, man! You tripping? They tripping? They tripping? They don't know how much. All right, think about this. I'm about to really put this in perspective for y'all. Listen to this. Before y'all go anywhere, listen to this. When you clean up behind your dog, there are nights where I'm literally with a with a plastic bag on my hand, picking up shit. Picking it up. Out my yard or on my nightly walks with Saki, I'm doing this now. Go flash forward to you working a human job, right? You at, I don't care, you are you working at a bakery or something. And somebody go in the bathroom and and and, and they have an accident. You got to go clean that toilet, right? You expect to be compensated for that. Right or wrong? So that job pays you hourly wages. Now I want you to flash back to what I just said about picking up the dog crap behind these dogs on these walks and daily. If you pay for nothing else than the fact that I maintain the health and well-being of these animals for two to four years and you expect a discount, you tripping. And this ain't the game for you because until you go through it, you don't understand the value and the convenience of that. And don't let it be a large kennel with, with, with 50, 60 dogs. Don't let it be that. Where they got to pay for equipment because you can't do that by hand. Or you got to pay for your hands. And me, growing up how I grew up, we used to get the crackheads, or, the, or we call them unks, to come in and clean. But the motherfuckers still. So now you got to pay for security, cameras, Wi-Fi. Then... Man, you can't be in this game without a tool. I don't even, I, man, I don't go nowhere. You can't be in this game without your tool on you. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I pull up, when I pull up, I pull up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, I ain't out here scared. And I, throw hands. But this ain't a world where hands matter anymore. You got to be prepared for your own security. You know what I'm saying? When I'm traveling, I'm traveling. I got a family at home. You got a family at home. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. You got to do what you got to do to take care of you and yours. So, all right, so cool. We just talked about shoveling sho shoveling poop and and feeding them. Now let's talk about the water and the stuff. What would you pay somebody to do that for you, for that convenience? All right? Now that person is an employee, so they're going to want other stuff. They're going to expect a discount on their puppy, which they earned it. So do you give them money and let them use their money you paid them to buy that puppy from you? Or... Do you count the hours against the puppy? That's, an, that's a, a discussion you got to have. And sometimes they're going to want to switch it up on you. Sometimes they're going to want money. Sometimes they're going to want discounts and perks. Then what if their people skills ain't good? Business. All right, so you dealt with the people, dealt with the poop. Then you get a dog that's a hard keeper. My red boy stuff. It's hard keepers. They break cages. Hey, I appreciate it. 614 tree. I appreciate that. And salute. So you get a, a red boy dog, pure red boy, that's really acting like it's supposed to be acting. Right now, I got to go replace three cages in my yard because my red boy dogs is rambunctious. Honestly, truly, I'm trying to farm them out. I'm not even going to lie to you. I want all my pure red boy stuff. I, if it's greater than 50% red boy and Jocko, I want it up out of my yard. Like I want to keep it because I want I want a quarter of that in my stuff, just a quarter of it in my stuff. That's facts. Like I'm not a box man, and if the, if I was a box man, I would not let them go. If I was a box man, I would not let them go, because my red boy stuff is straight gas, and the people I got it from, they built that. That's why I pay what I paid for because they built that. But when you live like me, residential, and you need dogs that can be kept, my, my Eli Jeep stuff is a lot easier to deal with. And that's just facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, they bite hard, but they're a little bit, they're a little bit more laid back. They're a little bit more laid back. So 
So you're dealing with a hard keeper now. They tore up three pins. I got a collapsed pin in my backyard right now because Red Boy Dog was just shaking on it, just biting it and shaking on it, bent up, bent it up, done, snatched one of my Eli dogs through the cage, almost lost her, took her teeth out so she retired early. You know what I'm saying? A yard accident. And people want people want to pay regular price for that. Now I don't had to spend years learning how to doctor my dogs up to make sure that I could bring them back from that. And um, yeah. Now flash forward. So that's three aspects. Then you got to talk about time, because everybody wants to see your puppies. Everybody wants to talk to you, ask you, well, what this and that about your puppies, and they just wasting time because time is money. If you think I'm lying, then how you get? Why, why do you think we get paid by hours? So people call me, and I'm polite. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna talk to. I'm gonna chop it up with you. Talk to you. I don't care if you spend the money or not, because I wasn't given that when I was in the game. When I messaged Tom Garner, if I wasn't spending money with Tom Garner, Tom Garner wasn't trying to hear what I had to say. You know what I'm saying? Carl Cruz was very short on the phone with me when I called Carl Cruz. Very short. You know what I mean? Uh, Ready Red, you know what I mean? Like I, I rock with Ready Red, but Ready Red was kind of like that too. You know what I'm saying? He um, after I spent money with him, he got real talkative. You know what I'm saying? But he busy, like he, he's busy. I get that. I respect that. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but that's one of the things you gotta look at. If you gonna, if you're really gonna do this as a, as a business, you gotta have time to to invest in your people because people don't buy puppies from you because you got necessarily the best puppies because the only way to know that would be the match. People rock with you and buy stuff from you. Because they rock with you. They're investing in you. They like what you provide. Those red boy dogs are hard keepers. We call them dumb game. Yes. Stupid game, bro. Stupid game. To a fault. Them red boy dogs is stupid game to a fault. And when I got it, you know what I'm saying? I thought I was slick. You know, I figured out. I, I was going to fast track it. That's, that's my, this is the, the God honest truth. So... I was like, cool. I'm going to buy some pure red boy and start a yard. All right, cool. Six months in, they're killing each other. $1,500 puppies, killing each other. Okay. Yeah, they hot. Hot as fish grease. Try to get them bred. Actually, do a pure red boy breed. She had five puppies, stepped on two of them while I'm watching. So I had to bottle feed the other three. But y'all want it for five hundred dollars? Okay. Now those traits, those traits that I'm dealing with mean that every time this female has a litter for the rest of her life, I have to be there, take time off work, and I work two jobs. I work two jobs that I'm an employee for. Red boy, student. hey, call me, bro. Say li- the Mims dollars, bro. If I if I if I went back in the red boy, I would want some of the stuff off Dopey and Polly or Dopey and Amber. But um, yeah, man, like them red boy dogs, man, that female, she um, I'm literally like, bro, like me and my wife in the garage, cause I, I birthed them in the garage, I welcomed them in the garage. Me and my wife in the garage, and she ain't make no like, she made no noise when she went into labor. Like my my Eli dog, she went into labor. And she let out, it almost sounded like a human, like, hey, woo, help, get in here, help me out. Like, oh, God. You know what I'm saying? All five puppies lived. All five puppies is still alive to this day. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I look at things like that, man. I'm like, man, like these red boy dogs, to reproduce them and put them in your hands, it costs me more time. It's more, it's more difficult. And then the puppies have those traits. Hey man, a good mother dog is invaluable. I, another story. I'm glad you said that. So back to my my Eli stuff versus my Red Boy stuff. Eli dog, puppies puppies shit or piss in the cage. She would clean it up. She would eat it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not calling her a shit eater, but she would clean it up. Like make sure the puppies was. If I wasn't there, she would clean it up. So I wouldn't actually know how much the puppies was messing up in the cage. Red Boy dog. Would pee on her puppies. Like just the emotional detachment, just what the emotional attachment wasn't there that I would expect from a mama dog. It just wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? And so 
these are things that from a business aspect, you're like, man, like I really got to invest my time. But you still got to work your dogs. Don't forget that. The ones that ain't whelping a litter, you still got to work them. But you got to spend night and day with this dog. They don't let you be in a keep getting ready for a show and have a, a red boy dog like that. Because also part of the business is showing why your dogs are valuable. You got to show they're, they're fit to form. What, like, what's the difference between his dogs and your dogs? His dogs is confirmationally sound. Your dogs is not. His dogs is game. They test it. Your dogs is not. His dogs work. Your dogs don't work a meal. You see what I'm saying? Like, all of this is business, man. And like Jay-Z said, I'm a business man. Y'all are too. Every single person on here is a businessman. And I hope y'all soaking up this game. If it's valuable, man, if it's valuable information to you, let me know so I can give y'all what y'all need. I wanted to talk about the business side of it today because this side was not brought to me, bro. I'll give you another example. People come to me because I'm a certified dog trainer. And in my next live, I'll, I'll actually have my certificates and stuff so I can show y'all what I'm talking about. I'm a certified dog trainer, but to do that, I had to pay for those classes. So what you're doing is you're not only paying me for the knowledge I have, because knowledge is a piece of it. I can give you this knowledge. And uh, I was talking to my good brother, uh, Track Life Kennels, last night on his live. I can give you this knowledge, but knowing is not enough. You must apply the knowledge. So you're going to need a coach or a mentor to ensure you're doing it the right way. Now, once you're willing to do it, you must a impact kennels quality quality content. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. That's what, I appreciate that. Now, once you're willing to do what it takes to get where you're trying to go, being willing is not enough. You must do it. Example. First example, right? My cousin showed me when I was 17 how to vaccinate my dogs, how to get them penicillin, and how to do ivermectin on my dogs. Right now, even though he did it that first month, he said, okay, ne next time we do this, you going to do it. And even though I saw him with my eyes do that, I didn't know what it felt like for that needle to puncture the flesh. I didn't know what it looked like to pull out on that plunger just a little bit to make sure I wasn't in a blood vessel till I did it. You understand what I'm saying? I didn't understand what it looked like to properly worm a dog with a good wormer and then to watch them over the next couple of days and watch they poop. And if they got large round worms, you can see it. And every time that dog poop for the next couple of days, I'm there and I'm cleaning it up. And then I got my, my mixture of, of bleach or ammonia, whichever you prefer for your dogs to, to sanitize the area where they poop at while I'm worming them out to kill those parasites off not only my dog, but out my yard. I can sit here and tell you all day, but until you did it for yourself, you just don't know. And that's fine. But back to the business side of it. People want you to just do that for them without hitting you with what they owe you. Because you got knowledge, you got wisdom, you got experience, and they all build upon each other. The knowledge of is knowing you can read a book and get knowledge, right? You can read a book and get knowledge. So all this stuff I'm telling you on websites, Google, YouTube, you get knowledge from, from that. This talk, I'm giving you knowledge. The knowledge, I share freely. Now, the experience, you're going to pay me for that. All right? I can talk about my experiences, but for you, that's just knowledge unless you've done it before. Now, experiencing that, and that's why I give you a little bit more detail about that checking that plunger for that blood because I'm telling you until you experience that because there's this thing called negative and positive pressure on that plunger and depending on where it's at like I've, I've gone to put penicillin in my dog before right and I push the plunger and that mug will not move because I didn't wait for the penicillin to heat up to room temperature or to, to turn that needle with the with the with the syringe pointing up and push that plunger until I see a little bit of whatever it is I'm trying to inject my dog come out of there to make sure I ain't got no air bubbles in there to put no air bubble into my dog blood system. Because I done seen dogs with knots on their on back, on their on they hind quarters, with little knots that stick out because the person ain't doing it right. That's experience. 
I had to see it and be there. Then there's wisdom. Okay? And the wisdom, that comes from a combination of knowledge and experience. I'll give an example of wisdom. Wisdom would be, I'm going to talk about it in the box. All right, so hypothetically speaking, this is hypothetical for all y'all police out there. Just hypothetically speaking, you're in the box, right? And I was taught this. I was given this knowledge by one of my old heads. He said, hey, man, when a dog about to quit, there's physical signs before that dog ever quits. All right. So I'm going to tell you all the difference between a one-time game loser and a, and a curve for some people to understand this. I'm about to mess the game up, but I don't care nothing about none of that because I don't care about the box. When a dog is about to quit, a lot of dogs show physical signs. Now, being a dog trainer, these same signs show when I'm teaching a dog to do bite work. A dog that's going to quit and won't bite a suit shows the same size as the dog that's going to quit in a real, like, in the box. Now, there are there's fur on a dog's back that stands up when a dog is stressed. Now, if it stands up on the rough of the neck and by the tail, that's fear. If it stands up only by the tail, that's aggression. That dog is in there. Tail's up, wagging, flagging. Boom. He in there. Now, when a when an animal is about to quit, and I'm speaking about this, we can use the box, but this is, I'm telling you, working dogs in general, they get a knot in their tail. And it looks like like a, the blood is swelling up. When that knot forms, they about to quit on you. Now, from a training aspect, when I approach that threshold, I pull back. Now, imagine you got somebody in the box who sees this coming. A dog will, a dog will quit and keep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But knowing these signs is how you stop that because once you once they quit. If you can, if you can if, never let them see what it feels like to quit. Never let them see what it feels like to quit. But a smart man sees that and goes, hey, like, I'm going to forfeit this, but I just want to breed this dog. Or I'm going to sell this dog as a, as a game loser. So they go ahead and let him scratch one last time. You know, they, they go ahead and let him scratch. Knowing he's going to probably quit. He courtesy scratches, he out of there. Boom. You picked him up, game loser. You know what I'm saying? Even though he was about to quit. He was about to quit, quit. You just saw it coming. Hey, I appreciate that. You just saw it coming, so you stopped it. You saved your you saved your money. He's a businessman. That's also good handling. You know what I'm saying? Like, now mind you, uh, that's not good for the game, breeding that dog. But um I'm not gonna throw no names out there. Maurice Carver was a good businessman with the dogs. You know what I'm saying? So understanding this stuff, man, is it, vital. It's vital to the business aspect of it. And I'm telling you right now, when y'all look at it as a business, you'll enjoy it even more. Because a business should fund the happiness for you and your family, right? Like my wife has helped me whelp every single litter of puppies. Jeff Smith was good. Salute. My wife has helped me whelp every litter of puppies that has come through my house. Now, you got to take care of the people who taking care of you, taking care of the dogs. If I sell a puppy, there's not one puppy that I let go, not one item I sell off my website that I don't give part of that profit to or to do something for my wife, right? Not one. My wife is typically with me when I go to make moves, like we there. Salute. Hey, Amen. I appreciate that, man. Um... That's blessings, blessings. My wife is typically with me for everything. You know what I'm saying? Like my kids, you know what I'm saying? My kids, psh, hey, I call home, DJ, hey, I need you to take Saki out because I ain't going to be home on time. You know what I'm saying? They got to they gotta reap the benefits of that. You think I'm about to just have them out here doing this stuff and other people reaping the benefits of my kids putting in the work? Oh, so my website is it's Samurai Kennels. It's a GoDaddy site right now. But it's Samurai Kennel's uh, website. And uh, also, for those of y'all who want more info and stuff like that, I do drawings on Facebook. Yesterday, I just I just did a cash app, uh, $20 away. Because, like, I'm trying to grow all my, my social media presence right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
also if you got puppies and stuff uh and their quality uh i'm trying to create a, a create a conglomerate or or a, a a corporation and business aspect the the overarching goal would be this i need franchises all over the country because i don't breed that i don't breed that ever. i got one breeding this year and now that it's breeding in 2023 i don't have another breeding until 2025 unless like people come out the woodwork and just like hey we really want a puppy that bad A tree, that's true. And for a real for a real bulldogger, I 100% agree. What I'm telling you is everybody not real bulldoggers. Everybody is not real bulldoggers, bro. Everybody gameness is not gameness is not the defining quality in everybody. And understanding that when you when you talk to people, ask them the right questions. Ask questions until you understand what it is you're looking for. That's also part of the business, man. Because if a product doesn't meet your intent, you shouldn't buy that product. And I don't care if that's me or or Tom Garner or, or, or Chico Lopez or anybody else. If the product doesn't meet your, your QA check, don't purchase that product. It's not it. It's not, it's not that. Even when I selected my hoodies, the reason I could get cheaper hoodies, but I choose at least to be gilding and 100 percent cotton pre-shrunk because this hoodie been this hoodie done been washed ridiculous amount of times the the stuff is still on the front of it you know what i'm saying like it's it's a little ashy because it's old you know what i'm saying but like it's the quality is there and it ain't it ain't shrunk up it's true to size you know what i mean i could go get some softy stuff from dollar general and get it pressed up and cut my prices by 25 percent. but the quality of the product will match what i'm trying to put out and that's what i'm saying tree with that dog thing you're talking about like man like some people a curry is fine with them it just depends on what kind of cur it is. Yes. Mr. Hemphill, yes. What's that Lester Hughes said? He said, don't be surprised when they quit. Be surprised when they don't quit. I give you, man, man you done started some. All right. So I'm going to finish up the live with this, with this, with this thought. All right. Me and my cousin was talking yesterday about that. And I told my cousin, I said, cuz, I say, depending on what kind of loser it is, I would rather purchase a dog off of a game loser than a grand champion. And I'm going to tell you why. Now, with this, this thought process, this thought process is very important that y'all understand where I'm coming from with this. Okay. So gameness is, I told my cousin, cause he, he, he a D boy, you know what I'm saying? Like he, he's more into the. He didn't, he in the dog, so I had to break it down for him in layman's terms. And I'm going to use those same terms to break this down today. I said, cuz, I said, another word that could be misconstrued as gameness is heart. You know what I'm saying? Like, you see a little a, a dude in the hood who who he ain't really, he might not be a hood dude, but he catch a small charge and he eat that thing. He don't snitch like these other ones doing out here. He ain't no rat. You know what I'm saying? He got heart. He took that charge against all odds, right? And I say that the loser is more important to me than the, than the grand champion because you got people who come off the porch and they knocking heads off. Knocking off heads. Oh, I would like to let everyone know that the penicillin that was given at room temperature but must be stored in the fridge. Must be. Facts, Justin. Facts. But um, that, that loser... Didn't come off the porch knocking heads off. That loser came off the porch and got his got whooped and kept and kept going forward. You know what I'm saying? And he didn't get that knot in his tail. He was blindly going forward because he wasn't gonna quit against all odds. You know, that's the closest thing to dead game you're gonna get. You take a dog like Chinaman, right? And I love Chinaman Death. They whooped everything in very, very short time. You know, 42 minutes, 30 minutes, kilts on the 15 minutes. That's great. That's great ability. That is amazing. That is absolutely outstanding. But what if he had to go three hours? What if he had to go three hours?
So we sitting there and we talking about, and I love, I'm not going to lie to you. I love Mayday. I like Luke Kane. All these dogs were just beast, right? But when you start looking at the gameness of it, um, Grand Champ, to me, if I want to test the, the gameness of Grand Champion and I'm going beyond five, I'm only going up against other Grand Champions. And I'm looking at who they went up against. You can't take a SEC team or a Big Ten team and put it against UNC Chapel Hill football team. You can't do that. Yeah, is they D1? Yeah, but it's not the same D1. And so when you look at these things, man, like picking up, like pick, even boxers, like, you know what I'm saying? I like my red boy blood mix with anything. Yes. Yes. That red boy go good with anything, man. Um, but I, I want to say it's that Kobe blood that actually causes the blend well, man. Red boy is really game and it has its own strong characteristics. But I believe that Kobe blood is what, uh, what really clicked. I think that's why that Jeep, that Jeep red boy stuff clicked so good too. But yeah, man, like I stand, I stand by that a true game loser, not not a loser like we talked about where somebody just knew he was gonna quit and stop them, but a true game loser like crawl crawling game that was that was that was saved out after the box. That is that is unequivocally like what I would want to breed to, because the 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 ability doesn't always equate to gameness. does it and it depends on what your what your goal is is your goal to win because i mean you could win off ability you could off smarts you can win off anything as long as you out outclass the other person so part and story and i might not tell this 100 percent right but I'm, i want to share this with y'all so um there was a post on facebook and some of y'all might have seen this post and it was a uh, an African runner. I can't remember what country, and I don't want to bastardize it too much. But it was an African runner, right? And he had ran a marathon. He was going to win this marathon. But toward the end of the race, the signs, he couldn't understand the language of the signs that was up. And the second place guy was a, of a Caucasian that said, I don't know what country it was exactly. But um, but he saw that the guy wasn't running in the right direction. He could have beat him just because the dude didn't know what he was doing. You know what I'm saying? So he... he started yelling at him and told him to go that way. And so the guy ended up finishing ahead of him because he helped him out, right? That's sportsmanship. And to get the game back where what Red Boy y'all using, I believe Boomer stuff was the root. Hey, so the Red Boy stuff we use, uh, that I've used, I've used Mims, uh, Burns, uh, some Boomer stuff, and uh, walk them up. But um, back to the sportsmanship. The game or the game needs sportsmanship. That's what we lack. Jeff Smith, I agree. I agree. Um, and I'll tell y'all this, and this is the truth. This is no no kidding. I got some red boy stuff right now that I've seen work for an hour plus on condition. You know what I'm saying? Unconditioned. Just a healthy dog, man. Yes. That walk them off stuff, I've seen it go beyond the hour, hour and a half mark, unconditioned. You know, um, just just being tested. And it, yeah. But condition, yeah, man, condition, condition just allows you to go longer, to, but to see what you need to see, I don't think it's a time limit on seeing gameness. I think it's I think it's the, the the intensity of the training. I bl- I truly believe it's the intensity of the, of the of the training. I give you an example. Yeah, I keep saying I'm a lead, but y'all I mean, y'all be asking some good questions. Um and I like to put pe- I like to put it in perspective for people. All right. Deontay Wilder, right? I like to think I got hands for a regular man, right? Your average person walking down the street, you know, I go to the gym, I work out, I'm very fit, my life keeps me active. I would like to think in most situations, unless it's a trained fighter, I stand a pretty good chance of coming out of here, you know, good, decent. 
if Deontay Wilder catch me with a, with a good rib shot, I expect to probably be dropped off that first rib shot, right? Now, the Brown Bomber is a beast. I respect him. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not trying to take away any of my manhood or any of my, any of my like moxie. I'm just keeping it real. But if I'm if I take that first hit and I keep coming back, knowing that I'm about to get whooped because I want to go 12 rounds with Deontay Wilder, you gotta respect it, man. You gotta respect it. Whereas if I'm going up against another dude on the street and I can't go 12 rounds, I would feel some type of way. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, like, hold up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not meeting the cut. I'm not being tested appropriately. And that's how I feel about, you know what I'm saying? Like 12 rounds, one round, three rounds don't matter. Like, it's it's what what level of test and intensity are you are you being put under? You know? Um, that's why back in the day, like historically speaking, they used to do two dog, three dog on on, on one dog, you know, um, to really see uh what was what was happening. Hey man, uh this is Samurai Kendall, man. I really appreciate y'all. Y'all I gotta get up out of here, man. Uh, but if, if this is if this was good to y'all, please share the lives. Uh, check back in. Typically, my lives will be on Wednesdays. Wednesdays, either morning or night, depending on what my shift is. Um, last night, I didn't go live because there were three channels I really respect. Um, Fat Bill was live, Pelican Bay was live, and Track Life was live. And I'm typically not going to go live against one of my brothers, man, because I like to go on their lives and get their information from them. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, Mr. Hemfield. But um, I really appreciate y'all checking in and uh, rocking with us at, at uh, Samurai Kennels. For those of y'all who are interested, um, I will do another video on Sunday. On Sundays, I release videos, and during the week, I'll go live as much as I can. Uh, I also have a Patreon that some of the stuff I tell y'all that I'm not going to share on YouTube, you can subscribe to my Patreon to, to get exclusive content and to really see more about what the dogs got going on. Um, but this is Samurai Kennel. Uh, peace, love, and blessings. Uh, always stay true to the Bushido Code. And honor yourself, man. Death before dishonor. Samurai Kennels, we out.